Phillips, teen librarian, and I got two great books that I'd like to tell you about. They're by the same author, Monica Hesse. And these books are for older teens, and actually they're a really good read for adults. And they both take place in the 1940s in Europe. Uh, the first book is called The Girl in the Blue Coat by Monica Hesse, and it takes place in 1943 in Amsterdam. And Henneke, who is a young girl, uh, she's foregone further education. She's trying to help her family uh, survive financially. Her father's um, disabled, and uh, she's been working for an undertaker or funeral home as uh, like a receptionist or a clerk. And uh, the funeral home um, owner has a side business. As corpses come in, uh, he's used their ration cards to get extra rations, and so he's in the black market business. And uh, she, Henneke, is a, a delivery person. So with her bicycle, she's delivering uh, black market goods uh, throughout uh, the city of Amsterdam. Um, anything from cigarettes to sausages. Um, there's one woman who likes uh, makeup and lipstick. Uh, so, you know, war is going on, but she has to look good. And Henneke is, is um, consumed with uh, uh, guilt over the death of her boyfriend uh, and uh, blames herself, and she feels his family blames her as well. She encouraged him to go to the front uh, to uh, fight against the um, Germans who were invading her country. And, of course, they got overrun and he got killed. So she has that on her plate. Um, in her course of her runs, she runs into a woman named Mrs. Jensen who invites her in. She doesn't want to come in. She doesn't want to get involved with any of these people. She doesn't want any of their stories or anything. She knows Mrs. Jensen has no one. She might have a son in England, but she has no one else. But Mrs. Jensen kind of forces her to come into her house um, and uh, has uh, a nice hot drink for her. And on top of it is that nice uh, wafer pastry that the Danish love, which people hadn't been able to get, so she must have been saving it up. And Henneke knows that this woman wants something. Well, it turns out it's not quite what she thinks it is. This woman had been harboring or keeping hidden a young Jewish girl. And it turns out that the girl disappeared. And the woman can't figure out what happened to her and why. Uh, she was hiding in her house. Her back door was locked. The neighbors are very close. There's a yappy dog up the street who will yap at anything. Uh, and she was out front all day. But when she came in, the girl was gone. So she doesn't know what happened. So this is kind of a locked mystery case, but it's also a story of World War II uh, Nazi occupation of Amsterdam. And Henneke gets drawn into the story. Um, she starts investigating and uh, she delves into the girl's history and her friends and the school that she went to. And all of this um, it gets the attention of uh, the local resistant group. And uh, they contact her and they want her to help them because she has access to these ration cards. People are hiding Jews in their homes or uh, trying to spirit them to safety and they need food for them. Um, she's very reluctant to help. Um, she doesn't want to get involved in the resistance. Um, they can't figure out why she wants to help one Jewish girl when they are helping so many others. It's just a question of, we need to help both people we can. So this is a mystery story. It's a mystery story of um, uh, Amsterdam. Uh, Henneke is the quintessent Dutch girl with the beautiful blue eyes and the blonde hair. Uh, she's very good at getting past police because she's very charming. And that's how she's done her black market business. Um, but her reluctance to actually participate in the resistance uh, is um, understandable. Uh, but also she's drawn into the mystery of why this girl disappeared, why she left everything behind, and why would a Jewish girl go and leave a safe haven and go out into Amsterdam.
The second, and that was uh, published several years ago. The second book came out this year, and it takes place at the end of World War II, and it involves Zofia Letterman, who is a, um, a Polish Jewish girl. Uh, her, she knows that most of her family is dead. Her, uh, she lived in an apartment with a real extended family, um, with her mother, father, her younger brother, Abnik, and her um, grandmother and her aunt. And um, she knows that her mother, father, uh, grandmother, and aunt are dead. Uh, she's, uh, in the opening of the book, she's in a hospital. Uh, her camp was liberated by this, uh, the Russian, the Soviet soldiers, and she was saved by one particular soldier who found her unconscious. And they've been nursing her back to health in this hospital ward, which um, she titles in her mind, it's a hospital ward of broken women. And her mind has, she describes it as having holes in it. Um, she remembers things, but she doesn't know if her memory is true or whether she just dreamt these things. So um, she's hesitant to, to, you know, she's questioning her own sanity. And, uh, but into this, she's determined to find her younger brother, Epic. It was, um, he was A to Z, Sylvia. They were the beginning and the end of the alphabet of their family history. And she's determined to find him. And she convinces the Soviet soldier, who's a little sweet on her, and it's quite a gentleman, uh, to uh, get her released from the hospital really before she's ready to be released. She's not completely healed, and certainly mentally she's not healed. And, uh, but he does, it, it, they, she does get released, and they go back to her home uh, town in Poland, her home city, and to her apartment, which has been stripped bare. At least there's no squatters. She does find a friend of her aunt who survived, but that's the only person. And um, her, her neighbors still are still have Nazi flags out. Um, she is accosted by two men, who um, obviously uh, are wish to cause her bodily harm. And the only uh, salvation is that her soldier intervenes. And they're certainly not going to question a Soviet soldier with a gun. And he wants to be her protector, and but she's not ready for that. She wants to find her brother. She was told, and she always felt that as the older sister, she would take care of her brother. And she told her brother, um, and she remembers telling her brother that, uh, tell people you're not nine, you're 12, and you're tall for your age, um, try to get a job as an Aaron boy for the camp uh, commandant. Well, she finds out that, and she got separated from him in the fact that she has sewing skills. Her family had a factory uh, that manufactured clothes and both her and her mother and her grandmother were extremely good seamstresses and uh, did fancy embroidery on the manufactured goods in order to make them a little more upscale. So that's how she survived by working in the looms and, and sewing and uh, uh, survived uh, till the end of the war. So she finds out uh, from the locals that everyone in that camp that her brother had been in uh, was, were taken uh, into Germany, further into Germany. So she does something which is kind of reprehensible. She steals some money from the Soviet soldier and sets out on her own to find her brother. And in the story, she ends up in a displaced person's camp. And this is a really interesting story because Monica Hesse said that many of the Holocaust stories involve, you know, before the war, during the war, and in the camps. But not a, a lot of them were right after. And in the displaced person camps, you find a lot of different characters and their heroism and their um, ability to go on to life after so much has been lost is just heartbreaking and also a source of um, uh, amazement for me. And uh, this, again, this is another mystery, the mystery of her brother and whether she finds him, uh, the mystery of her uh, mental state and what memories are true and what memories are not. 
and also the mystery of the man that she falls in love with, Yosef, who um, never talks about his past. So these are two great books that I know that adults would love as much as uh, older teens. They both involve some mystery. They both involve harrowing stories. And they both involve um, uh, sadness, but in some cases, a great deal of joy. Uh, one of the best uh, events uh, in the displaced person's camp is a wedding. And at that point, she goes back to her sewing skills and reconstructs a dress for the young bride that actually might look appropriate on her. All of her clothes are donated and this woman gets this dress that was for an old lady with a lot of beading on it. And she constructs it for the woman's figure and uh, turns her into an actual bride. So it, it is a really good story. You can find both these books on Overdrive. You may have to wait for them because they're both popular. Even the older one is popular. Um, the Girl in the Blue Coat is available in book format, but it's also available in audio book format, and you might get it in audio sooner than the book format. And They Went Left just came out this year, so there is a demand for it. So happy reading. I think both adults and teens would enjoy this book. It certainly dis describes a time of uh, great turmoil and uh, great challenges and uh, uh, resonates with things in our lives today.